At the beginning of your document, you'll need to have a cover page. You probably will be given a template for this cover page that you can just copy and paste and try to make look nice. However, if you're not given, check your guidance, what needs to be included. That usually is logo, title, your name, probably word count. To insert the cover page, we'll need to create a space for it. The best way to do that is by using page break and the page break will ensure that everything after it moves onto a new page. So if we insert a page break at the beginning of this document, all of this text will shift on the next page and we'll free up this page for the cover. So I'm just going to click before the very first letter here and then from the insert tab, go to page breaks and there is the new page created. On this new page, I'm just going to put the words cover page just as a note that that's where the cover page is going to go. And then after it, Please check your guidance for any instructions. Usually it's the abstract that follows. However, you may be asked to include the table of content, a list of figures and list of tables before the abstract. So please double check. I'm going to have my abstract next. And after the abstract, I'm going to have the table of content and my list of figures and tables. And even though your headings will flow and will not start on a brand new page, the abstract is always on a brand new page and on its own. So you'll need to make sure you create a page break at the end of it as well. And that's where my table of contents is going to go. Table of contents is also major heading, so I'm just going to use heading one style and switch off the numbering. And on a brand new line under it, I'm going to insert the actual table of content. To do that, simply go to the references tab and table of contents options at the very beginning, and then go to custom table of contents. There's a useful option here that allows you to control how many different levels of headings are displayed within your table of contents. The default option is up to three levels. So your major headings, secondary headings, and third level headings. However, if you prefer to have less, you can change this. Or if you end up using level four headings as well, you could simply increase that to display those within the table of contents as well. So for me, I have three levels, so I can just click OK. And there is my table of contents. I'm going to take a new page after it. So insert page break and I'm going to display list of figures, which again is a major heading. So I'm just going to use heading one style without a number. And on the new line after it, I'm going to insert now my list of figures. To do that, go to the references tab and in the same group where the insert caption option is and the cross reference option is, you will see insert table of figures choose the caption label to be a figure and when you need a list of tables you can just choose it from here and click OK. Please always use the phrase list of figures not table of figures because when you list your tables table of tables doesn't sound right. List of tables definitely sounds better so list of figures and list of tables instead of table of figures and table of tables. Once you have your list of figures you can now create a list of your tables. If you have a small number of figures and tables you could consider having them under one heading. So instead of having a separate list of figures with two or three figures and list of tables with two or three tables you can have list of figures and tables and then listing all the figures and immediately below that listing all your tables. I'm going to have separate heading. And list of tables is also major heading. Heading one, without a number, and then press enter to go on a brand new line and references tab, insert table of figures, changing the caption label to display the tables instead. Click OK and there are your tables. The table of content will generate the list by scanning the document and identifying all headings marked with heading style. And the same for the list of figures and list of tables. The computer will simply scan your document and identify all the automatic captions you have created. However, those lists, once created, will not update themselves. In order to refresh them, you'll need to go and tell the computer to update those lists. The easiest way to do that is by selecting the entire document either by pressing Control A or from the Home tab right at the end you have an option to select all. And once you have selected the entire text of the document, all you need to do is right click anywhere in the document and you will see an option Update Field. 
this option will scan your document and will make sure every automatic field is updated. That includes your captions, your cross-references, table of content, list of figures and list of tables. And when it starts updating the table of contents, it's going to ask you, do you want to update just the page numbers or the entire table? Always use the entire table just in case you have new headings added or maybe some that have been removed. So it recreates the entire table of content rather than just refreshing the page numbers. When you click OK, it's going to ask you the same question about the table of figures and then afterwards for the list of uh, tables. Do you want to update just page numbers or the entire table? Always choose the entire table. And now your document has been updated. And if you look in your table of content, you will see that it now lists table of content, list of figures and list of tables as well. And that's the document now refreshed.